there's often this assumption that teams can just do it by themselves, right? That, and, and I think often when you're talking about technology transformation, you're talking about it because there's that realization to your point that you need to change. And, but, but you need to change because the teams are already underwater trying to do, do what they're doing day to day already. And so the idea that they can also just then take on a transformation uh, can sometimes be a detrimental. Hey everyone, I'm your host, Debbie Madden, and this is the Scaling Tech Podcast. Today, I'm talking to Sean D. Mack about his brand new book that is available now on Amazon, and we will have the link so you can buy it in the show notes. The book is called The DevSecOps Playbook, Deliver Continuous Security at Speed. I love that title. So, hey, Sean, thanks for being with us. Thanks for having me. Great to be here. Of course. Um, so a little bit about Sean before we jump into the question. So Sean is a transformational technology leader. He is also, as you know, an author, a speaker, a cybersecurity consultant, and a former CIO and CISO at Wiley. And we're talking about the book today. He's the author of the DevSecOps Playbook and uh, a CIO 100 award recipient. Uh, he's a visionary technology executive with extensive experience leading DevOps infrastructure, enterprise applications, security, and desktop desktop services. He's led global teams across a wide variety of companies, from financial companies like Experian to innovative tech companies like Etsy. I'm real excited to jump in. Uh, I want to start with a shared vocabulary so that we're all talking about the same thing. So describe what you believe to be the definition of DevSecOps and how is DevSecOps different from DevOps? So it's kind of two questions in one. Absolutely. It's a great place to start, Debbie. And uh, it's interesting because I've been part of the DevOps community for uh, long enough now that I, I really remember when that was the question around DevOps. You right. know, what, that, was that Dev was, what is DevOps? Yeah, right. right. Yeah. We started every, every conversation there. And luckily, you know, now that DevOps has really matured a bunch, uh, we've codified around some standard ways of defining it. Um, and it makes it easier when we talk about DevSecOps because fundamentally, uh, DevSecOps is about applying the principles of DevOps to security, right? Um, it, so in that way, we can really think of uh, DevSecOps as that subset of DevOps, which focuses on security. Now, I, I would note, too, that like DevOps has always included security. If you look at some of the earliest books on DevOps, uh, they, they talk about security. But in, in my own experience, all too often, security isn't part of that conversation. When you're talking to SREs, when you're talking to application teams about uh, DevOps, right? Security all too often isn't is in part of that conversation. So really DevSecOps as a, as a, as a word um, is useful because it brings that focus to security, right? And, uh, and so if we look at DevOps as a set of principles for delivering value to the customer based on like lean management as well as collaboration, we can look at how do we take these principles and apply them to security. How do we take things like flow and collaboration, trust, transparency, uh, learning culture, and apply those to security? And if we do that, then we're talking DevSecOps. Got it. Got it. Thank you. That's helpful uh, for those like me that are still getting caught up. <laughs> um, so, so, so in your book, you really talk about at the core helping technology leaders and technology teams keep their businesses secure, right? Like by bringing the word security into the definition of, of DevOps to really making it be a forefront of the conversation, like you just said. And to do this, you talk about ways teams can leverage what you call the triad, which is people, process, and technology to really build holistic and strong 
cybersecurity infrastructure. So there's a lot in there and there's a lot that people know, oh, it's too much, it's too hard, I don't know everything, where do I start? So like, what are the like two or three most important things to get right with this triad of people, process, and technology? Yeah. If you could pick two or three. I'm sure yeah. there's a lot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's definitely a lot. First of all, what I'd say is, you know, one of the things that's important with DevSecOps and, and powerful about it is that it's not just about secure. It's about secure at speed. Right. And this is the cool thing about it, because, look, we can do security by stopping everything and saying, oh, just, you know, the securest application is the one that isn't out, you know, doesn't reach the Internet. Right. But DevSecOps offers this possibility not only to deliver speed, but to deliver to deliver security, but to deliver security at the speed that business demands. Right. And 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 of course, we can use the classic uh, triad of people process and technology and look at all the things we need to do in there. There are a couple critical ones um, it, with people. I mean, first of all, it's all about people, right? <laughs> Fundamentally, this is a cultural transformation. And so we've got to focus on that. And with people, I just say focus on, and, and actually I'd start there, focus on the cultural transformation. Understand this is not about tools, it's not about technology. It's about culture. And once, if we start with that knowledge, it, it makes sense why we have to do what we have to do to make that transformation for DevSecOps. Um, on the process side, I'd say begin with the end in mind. And that is think about why you're doing DevSecOps, right? Don't do DevSecOps because Sean wrote a book on DevSecOps. Right? Like, don't do DevSecOps because your boss told you to or because it's a buzzword, right? Like, figure out what are the results you're trying to achieve with this transformation. And this is kind of the second part on the process front, which is then determine how you're going to measure, right? In defining where you want to go, figure out how you quantify that destination and then make sure you measure progress against it because that will make sure you're going in the right direction and actually uh, put some checks and balances to make sure you're constantly going in that direction. And the, the last point I would say on the, the technology, the third part of this, uh, is to really into use technology to integrate the culture of collaboration into everything you do. And one, one of the best ways to do this is, of course, integrating security into your deployment pipeline classic DevSecOps mechanism, but it's so important because it really means you're building security into the process. It means you're not releasing unless it's secure, right? At the very least, you have all the tools and processes in place as part of that deployment pipeline to make sure that you're getting to market with um, more secure products and services. Now, do is it beneficial to already be at a place of continuous deployment here, or is your ability to do continuous deployment irrelevant or not tied to your ability to do DevSecOps well? Are those two linked in any way? Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, this is this is the um, continuous integration, continuous deployment pipeline. It's all about being in a continuously deployable state that's also secure. So absolutely, uh, what your business demands, what your customers demand may vary from one industry to the other, but uh, DevOps has generally shown that, um, you know, being in this uh, ability to continuously deploy is going to give you a competitive advantage. And if we can build security into that process, you're going to not only be getting to market fast, you're going to get to market fast and secure. Right. Got it. Okay. Um, so now on the flip side, so these are kind of like, this is what's most important to get right. Where do you see folks stumble? Like, what are your, what are the most costly mistakes of implementing DevSecOps? Yeah. You know, I, I mean, I've been doing leading transformation for a long time and I've got to see a lot of failed transformations and uh, I've, 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 I've been parts of them, right? And I've learned a ton from it. So certainly have seen my share of challenges. Uh, one of them 
most common, and I touched on this earlier, is the failure or the focus on tools, right? Dev ops and DevSecOps is about culture and, and transformation of that culture. I was talking to, uh, prior to Wiley, I led my own global DevOps consulting firm, and I talked to one client and they said, Sean, we're doing this massive DevOps transformation. I said, that's great. What are you doing? They said, well, first we're going to move to cloud, right? This year we're going to move to cloud. And then next year we're going to implement our CI CD pipeline. And then next year we're going to implement containers. And it's kind of like, that's great. But when are you going to do DevOps? Like, like what you told me was a lot of great technology, but it's not the core of what we're doing here. And I think that failure to focus on the cultural transformation, especially in DevSecOps, where we need to really break down these silos uh, more than anywhere else, uh, that's important. I think there's also, going back to the uh, making sure you understand why you're doing, often a failure to communicate value. Uh, there's this assumption te with technologists and, and I include myself in this, that it's like, oh, we built something cool. Everybody should just jump on board. Right. Or there's this new concept. Why isn't everybody doing it? Um, everybody should be excited about DevSecOps, right? But it's not true because people are really busy doing what they're doing and people get entrenched in the ways of the work. And so we need to understand and communicate the value and communicate the value to the people we're talking to. There's a value to one one group of stakeholders may be very different. Right, the, the value and also like help, un, help communicate what the risk of the status quo is, which is part of the value of changing Right. Because there, there, cause there might be a larger risk of the status quo where like we have to do something different immediately or the status quo might be OK for some time. But that 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 shared understanding or at least that shared data on what happens if we don't do this. That's absolutely right. That's a great point. And, and building that urgency around it, like, sure, we cannot we cannot change and go out of business right? <laughs> like that's the <an> option. <laughs> Right. But, uh, but there's a real risk in there. And, and you know, I think that um, that also hits on the last thing I'll say that's a challenge here, which is there's often this assumption that teams can just do it by themselves. Right. That and and I think often when you're talking about technology transformation, you're talking about it because there's that realization to your point that you need to change. And but but you need to change because the teams are already underwater trying to do do what they're doing day to day already and so the idea that they can also just then take on a transformation uh can sometimes be a detrimental and and so you need to provide the resources that teams need to have success in that one of the best things i did in terms of driving our devops transformation at wiley was bringing on a devops coach and he really, I mean, we always have been talking about agile coaches for a long time, but very rarely do we hear about DevOps coaches, but he was really instrumental in helping drive forward our process. And um, the last thing I'd say here is that you may also want to look at outside resources, right? Because there is this big bubble of work when you're starting to do a transformation and to simply keep that on already overburdened technical staff is not only unfair, but a recipe for um, for failure. Now, last thing I'll say here is just a caveat that by also saying it's a cultural transformation. So you can't have someone come in and do that, tra do your transformation for you, right? It's like, you know, if you're trying to get in shape, you can't have someone get in shape for you, right? <laughs> like like it's it needs to be internal. But certainly getting that help while also recognizing that there will be work for your teams to do, I think is the way to go. Yep. And you know, I mean you're preaching to the choir in me because I've been, you know, I've had these conversations, what? I've seen it. It <laughs> is you don't want to kind of wipe your hands of something and have someone else be the magic and then wonder why it didn't take internally well, right it is yeah. it is a journey that ideally most of the team goes along and also you know 
just with the fitness journey, you can, you can go it alone or you can hire an expert to guide you so long as you are in that driver's seat. Yeah. Putting yeah, in the work. Absolutely. Uh, but at the end of the day, you have to buy the sneakers. You have to put on the sneakers. You have, <laughs> you to, have, to, do, you have to run, right? You have yeah. to run, right? You can't watch a video of someone running. <laughs> That's That'd right. be great. If we can solve that problem, let me know. I'll, uh, I'll, I'd love that. Um, so, all right. So we talked about a little bit briefly, and I want to dive into this deeper of um, the importance of shifting security and security considerations to the front end of the development cycle. Um, uh, one way is to actually put it in the name DevSecOps, which mm -hmm. you you're helping us do. But tell us why this is so important to really shift security um, uh, up front. And look, we're, yeah. we're used to this, right? We shifted yeah. testing up front. Yes, right? yes, like it's, yes. This is not a new concept, right? We, Absolutely. We, we've shifted the way design is integrated. Actually, we've shifted it to continuous versus only up front, right? right? And so yeah. this follows that similar pattern, but tell me why shifting security up front is so important. Yeah, yeah you know, and you hit the na nail on the head there, Debbie. Like it is, it goes back to the same principles that we learned about with, with um, uh, shifting testing or, or the, quality to the left, right? And that's, it decreases the cost of software delivery, right? There's a, there's a study going back all the way to like 2002 from uh, NIST, the National Institute of Standards and Technology that found that it's 30 times more expensive to fix a bug than in later stages of development than upfront, right? And the same thing applies whether you're talking about a software defect or a security defect. Right, a security vulnerability. If you can fix it up front, it's going to be significantly less costly. But particularly with security, uh, it's important as well because it underpins some of the core concepts of, of DevSecOps. Right, one is the idea that security is built into how we work. It can't be an afterthought. It can't be a hey, we're all done, now let's toss it over to the security team. It has to be a shared responsibility that we're all working on and building into how we work, right? And we talked about building it in, into the, the CICD pipeline. That's a great way to do it. Uh, but it also underpins this other concept, the, this concept that security is everyone's responsibility. It isn't just security team's responsibility at the end of the the development to say, no, it can't go out because it's not secure, right? We all have to play a role in that. And that means that security starts uh, when at the very beginning of any product or service development. And I, I really like this mentality because I saw a shift in the, in the mindset of software engineers about five years ago, starting back about 10 years ago, where there were some engineers that were um, had the mindset that, you know, if I'm a software engineer, then I also am a DevOps engineer, mm -hmm. right? That was yeah. like the mindset. And some engineers did not have that mindset. And now I'm seeing more and more engineers really understand that the DevOps piece, whether or not you do it as your primary job, it is upon you to a minimum understand mm -hmm. how it impacts the flow, how it impacts what you're doing. And so now my hope is that DevSecOps will now kind of be a natural extension of that. Again, there will be there will be a rainbow of yeah. enthusiasm amongst the technologists. <laughs> but right, but but like the more the more that the majority of of technologists embrace that this true end to end, um, I think the more everyone kind of wins, right? Yeah. Yeah. No, absolutely. Just like we have application developers thinking more about the operational aspects of code, the resiliency of the applications they're developing, we also have to th be thinking about the security and making sure that we are using secure coding practices with those applications. So now, so folks like myself, I'm not a technologist, um, how should us non-technical stakeholders <laughs> be thinking about DevSecOps? Because yeah. as I'm listening to you, this is great. Our teams are going to be incorporating DevSecOps, but but how should us non-technical stakeholders be incorporating and changing our thinking about it? Why? And I really think that it's important that we bring in non-technical stakeholders. I mean, because it is a cultural transformation, 
there's a lot of stakeholders, right? And if there are, and we're not really thinking about it correctly, we need to bring in all the people that are touched by that. And that especially applies to non-technical stakeholders. I think the, um, the messaging and how we talk to those stakeholders will depend to some extent on the stakeholders we're talking about, right? And, and, but we need to go back and think about the benefits it brings. So if we're talking to executive business leaders, right? It's about you know doing better than our competition because we're getting to market quicker and we're delivering more secure products. Like that's a win. That's a win. And that's something you can talk to your co customers about, right? Um, if you're talking to, uh, say, internal audit, right? W we can talk about how we're reducing manual work, right? How we're reducing their need to go nag engineers for to manually collect data and provide that data how we can provide automated dashboards so they can see compliance and, and see it in real time all the time. More than anything, I'd say all around, we can all understand that it's about collaboration and we can all talk about how we need, if we work together better, we're going to deliver more secure products to market faster. Yeah. And I think, you know, uh, it's funny, like the more things change, the more things, you know, stay the same, yeah. because yeah. what you said, if we zoom out is, you know, decades old advice, which is if you want to get something done, pitch it to the stakeholder um, in a way that gets the thing they want done. Absolutely. 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 <laughs> That's the best way yeah. to get your thing done. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. And I, you uh, know, and, and that, and I, and it really, this is in a sense, very similar, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and the thing I love about it is that there's a really good case here, right? Yes. That we can't, that, that what we're doing is going to help them. I'm not making this up. Right, like, we're not, yeah. data that shows that if we do this right, it's going to deliver value to, to everybody uh, around the company. Right, and I think that the thing about security, at least that I've seen when I've spoke with stakeholders, is there is there is a group of non-technical stakeholders that say like it's almost like out of sight out of mind like i don't really understand it but i'm not worried about it because i know my team's going to take care of it and but what is it right and what happens what's the worst case scenario and i think it is upon the entire team to really understand like all right how could this go really wrong with us from a security perspective now that we're having all of these gen i tools create code right like there might be less human eyeballs on our production software in the future, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. So I think, I think and, your book is coming at a really good time. Yeah. At the same time, we're seeing more and more high profile attacks, more and more. And so I think there is uh, more and more of this um, recognition from uh, uh, the board level on down that security needs to be a priority. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. Cause yeah, I absolutely agree. So let me, let me end with, so how ought we educate ourselves, right? So that could be non-technical stakeholders. It could be, um, uh, folks on other teams, right? If we really buy into this DevSecOps is important. We want to have it at the beginning of the software development life cycle. It is about a cultural collaboration and transformation. What steps can we take to educate ourselves and, and really like like take personal accountability to to educating our own selves. Sure, sure. Well, I mean, first of all, buy my book. <laughs> yep, that's great. Step number one. Buy the book. Um, read the book. Yeah. Um, and 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 I've actually, you know, because of my perspective on this, I have focused actually a lot on the cultural aspects. It's not a um, treaty on how to you know, write uh, your deployment pipeline. It is a lot about uh, transformation. And so I, 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 all joking aside, I do hope it has something of value to everybody, whether you are a engineer or uh, someone working focused more on infrastructure, cloud, or you're a business stakeholder who wants to understand more about this. Um, but <laughs> beyond that, I'd, I'd say, you know, it's about communication. Um, and 
again, um, about building those communication campaigns, right? Like you need to almost think about transformation as uh, the, the communication around any transformation like DevSecOps is almost a, a marketing okay. campaign, right? Coca-Cola doesn't say, hey, I send you an email. Well, why aren't you drinking my soda? <laughs> you know, like, like they're doing TV, they're doing billboard, they're doing product placement in commercial and in um, movies. They're placing it on the right place. And we need to think about that when we're doing a DevSecOps transformation, make sure we're communicating, communicating, communicating. Um, I've also uh, implemented a few different practices which help really entrench it in the culture. Um, one thing my team did at, at Wiley was to have security cha champions within the lines of business. And those people were kind of honorary members of our security team, but they could really bridge that gap, understand the, the technology for the lines of business at a really deep level. Um, but also understand the security concerns and, and try and bridge those two gaps. Um, and then also build cultural events. We had some hugely successful DevOps days internally at Wiley. They started as, you know, kind of grassroots event. You know, we thought we'd have a couple people. It's turned into, you know, uh, one of the biggest tech events at, at the company we had multi-day events with multiple tracks running uh, through the days, hundreds of, of, of people coming, major speakers from, uh, you know, DevOps thought leaders coming from outside. And the great thing was more than that, we had, you know, people from all teams. We had, of course, people from our security team, but we had per people from our networking team talking about the automation and the ways that we had people from the business talking about how they fit into this. Uh, we had uh, people talking about the training we were developing for our customers around DevOps and DevSecOps, right? So um, so those are great ways to build it into the culture. I think all of this, uh, we have to also make sure that we're. it's not a one-time thing, right? It's not one and done. The measurements we do, if you're measuring, measure on a monthly basis, measure on a yearly basis, build a cycle of continuous improvement. Make sure you're always looking and how you're progressing, make sure you're continuing to progress in the end. You know, in the end, it's, it's all about, and all these things help in bringing people together around security, right? And, and what we found is that if we do this, if we get people together and build it into the culture, the potential to deliver uh, securely is just tremendous. That's amazing. Uh, well, unfortunately, we're out of time, but I have learned a lot. Um, and I love the how the, it is uh, not necessarily simple yet at the same time it is not necessarily overly complex yeah. that is my yeah. biggest takeaway from this conversation devsecops is uh something that both technologists and non-technical stakeholders ought to really dig in understand embrace think of as part of our continuous iterative cycle um and in doing so our software will be better for it our outcomes will be better for it and our security so uh thank you so much for the education and for your time and again, the DevSecOps playbook is available on Amazon. Uh, please go check it out. We will have the link below. And uh, thank you so much, everybody. Take care. Thank you, Debbie.